The subject of this video is the process of translation, by which an mRNA sequence is used as a template to build an amino acid sequence, a polypeptide, or protein. This sequence begins with an mRNA molecule, which serves as the template for building the protein. More specifically, this sequence begins at a start codon, a series of three nitrogenous bases on the mRNA molecule with the sequence AUG. At this site on the mRNA molecule, the small ribosomal subunit will bind. Following the binding of the small ribosomal subunit, the first tRNA, or transfer RNA molecule, will be introduced. The first tRNA molecule, like all of the following, will contain an anticodon sequence, which binds by complementary base pairing rules to the codon sequence on the mRNA molecule. On the other end of the tRNA molecule is a particular amino acid, in this case methionine. It is worth noting that for each mRNA codon, and therefore each tRNA anticodon, there is one and only one amino acid that corresponds. This chart shows the codon and amino acid for every codon sequence. Now back to the process of translation. The initiator tRNA will bind to the start codon, and following this binding, the large ribosomal subunit will join in, binding to the small ribosomal subunit and the mRNA molecule at the start codon. It is worth showing before bringing the large ribosomal subunit into place that there are three distinct sites to the large ribosomal subunit, the A site, the P site, and the E site. Now that the translation complex is fully assembled, we can proceed with the next step in translation. The next tRNA molecule with a anticodon complementary to the GUC codon present at the A site of the ribosome will now enter. As you can see, the CAG anticodon complements and pairs with the GUC codon on the mRNA. This particular codon sequence translates to the amino acid valine. Now that the two tRNAs are positioned next to each other in the A site and P site of the ribosome, a bond will form between these two amino acids. This type of bond is known as a peptide bond. As the peptide bond forms between the two amino acids, the first of the two will dissociate from its tRNA molecule. The ribosome will then shift down the mRNA, and the first tRNA, which has now been shifted to the E, or exit site, will be expelled from the ribosome complex. As you can see, the tRNA in the P site now bears both of the amino acids, or a growing polypeptide. The P stands for polypeptide. A new tRNA will enter into the A site. Again, the anticodon from the tRNA will match the codon on the mRNA, and the tRNA will bring with it an amino acid, amino acid A in the A site. Again, a peptide bond will form, and the bond between the tRNA and the P site will be cleaved. Again, we will shift down the mRNA molecule. Again, you can see that the tRNA in the P site bears the growing polypeptide chain. The tRNA in the E site will be expelled. Again, a new tRNA molecule will enter with the appropriate anticodon and amino acid. Again, a peptide bond will form and the growing polypeptide chain transferred, the mRNA shifts, and the tRNA exits from the E site. As you can see, we have a growing polypeptide chain attached to the tRNA in the P site. 
Now we have reached the end of our mRNA sequence, as indicated by the presence of a stop codon, in this case UGA. When a stop codon is reached, a release factor will bind. The binding of this release factor causes the translation complex to dissociate. We are left with a completed polypeptide and the mRNA molecule which could be translated again. If this process were to repeat many times, you would end up with a much longer polypeptide which could fold into its unique specific shape and perform its particular function. To review, this video has shown how an mRNA sequence can be translated into a polypeptide amino acid sequence to make a functional protein.